Hello everyone. Today we're doing another interview. This time we're joined by XJ Zero, one of the most notable artists in our community. Without any further ado, let's get started. Could you quickly explain who you are to the people who may not already be familiar with your work? My username is XJ Zero, and I'm an artist in the teenage robot fan community. I have done fan art for the show since its original airing in 2003. Primarily used DeviantArt during this time, but have recently expanded the Tumblr, Pixiv, Instagram, and Twitter to widen out my audience. Since you've been a fan of the show for so long, can you remember what about it pulled you in at first? Can you remember how other early viewers reacted? At the time when the show was new, I was having an obsession with the Mega Man X games. When I first saw the commercial, she reminded me so much of Mega Man, and I really liked robots in science fiction. Even more so, it was the art that caught my eye, which I would learn more about later. High speed internet was still fairly new, so as soon as I had seen the show, I hopped right on and looked for more about it. I was hooked. The first thing I found was the fan art, and one thing was certain, people loved Jenny. They fell for her. They wanted to be her friend or wanted to be like her. Sites like Fanart Central and Fanfiction.net were quickly flooded. We just couldn't get enough. Your OC is one of the most popular ones in the community. Could you tell us what influences went into his design? I know that you mentioned Mega Man X. Did X influence the design? <laughs> well, I don't know about popularity. At best, he's liked by anyone who took the time to learn about him and got to know me. What you see now was not actually his first look. Being the kid I was, I followed suit with many of the other fans with OCs and just did a reshow of Jenny's look with the armor of Zero from the X series. So that's also where I took my first username from. The XJ prefix was added later by a friend from the old community and I just kept it. I later changed his design to reflect the 1930s superhero archetype to better fit the show's retro influence. Simple, easily recognizable, and a smile that says everything's gonna be alright. Has my life as a teenage robot changed your art style for non-MLAATR related pieces? Before Teenage Robot, I was really into drawing anime style, so I had some knowledge of drawing the human figure properly. Once I became a fan, I went with the simple shape style of the show. My brother once lamented that it was a huge step backwards for me. It was all I would draw for a long time. It was easier. Over time I would adapt it to the other techniques I learned, leading to my current style. So yeah, the art of Teenage Robot changed my art style in a massive way and left me open to try other styles from time to time. I wanted to keep improving so my art could be liked and enjoyed. It's been worth it. I have a modest watchers list, and people like my OC. And while I am very choosy and sporadic with requests, I prefer to surprise people with art of their characters. Everyone deserves to see their vision refined, and not everyone can pay. Gotta look out for them too, which is why I never ask for commission. I'm not sure how I would react to an offer though. Have you told any friends or family about your love for My Life as a Teenage Robot? If so, how did they react? <sighs> Oof. It was no secret how much time I was spending on the old Tremerton High forum. My father liked the art style, and my mother kept all the pictures I drew, but I mostly kept them myself. They were concerned with how much time I was spending on the fandom. I was losing sleep and my schooling was affected. They wanted to help me. What have been your best and worst experiences in the My Life as a Teenage Robot fandom so far? As with any fan community, I've had personality clashes with other fans. Nothing big to get into, but one of the hardest things I went through was losing touch with the community when I left home to build my life as a growing boy. I missed all of seasons 2 and 3 when they aired due to having no cable and no internet for the few years that followed. My best experience in the fandom is having been able to meet so many unique fans. Carrie J, Mimi, Isabella, Champ Mars, Kayla, Punk Robot, Crystal Robot, Bright Star Robot, Fairy Robot, Hunter, Almobius, Agailazan, Koith, Jacob, 
Alex, Rets of Nora, Traz, Khaki, Black Rose, PJ, Nathan, MCP, Wolfie, Average Kid, Fenton, Vic, Fez, Wire, TI-83, Tic Tac, Genesis, Tear Gas, Courtney, so many to remember over all these years, and you, and maybe many more. Also like any community, it's our differences that give the fandom life. Sharing opinions, agreeing, disagreeing, overcoming adversity, and doing right by others. To feel so small in a crowd, but to still be able to stand out in a big way. To be able to share my art in service of the fan community has been a privilege. I care about it so much. It's been swell. I can't interview you without asking about your quote on the back of the official My Life as a Teenage Robot art book. Could you explain how that happened and tell us how you reacted to it? Back in 2004, a show writer under the username XJ Rider shared on the Teenage Row blog about how Art Deco was an influence for the show's artwork. The art of Teenage Robot always captivated me, and it was nice to know what the style was called, so I wrote so. It was first brought to my attention by my friends Khaki and Traz, then several others. I laughed. It was cool to see that they considered it relevant to the art book, along with the other quotes by fellow fans Kerry J and Coyote Lou. It made me feel like I had become part of Teenage Robot's legacy, albeit a very small one. Not to mention my OC's name getting published, no less. It was really cool, but it doesn't put me above anyone. The odds of being picked like that were massive, so I curbed my enthusiasm, humbled. You've been in the My Life as a Teenage Robot community for nearly half your life. How have you stayed so dedicated to it, and have you come close to losing the dedication? The closest I've come to losing my dedication was during my years trying to get my life together. I had no time for TV or an online community. Those are things you have to let go when you're growing up and becoming an independent adult. So I essentially disappeared from the community for a few years. I would go so far as to say that Maybe I was forgotten, but I never forgot my fellow fans. I thought about them a lot when I was struggling to find my way in this world. Even when I was homeless, I thought about how I could overcome my trials for them, to show that we could do anything. I think those thoughts kept me dedicated to the community, because I knew everyone was having their own struggles. I wanted to be a good example, to show that we could all make it, to show that all things are possible. And I made it. And I, I even got married to a girl that just happens to be named Jenny. It took me a while to convince her this was not about a cartoon fixation. Do you view the show differently now compared to back in the 2000s? If so, what changed? What has changed is my view of Jenny Wakeman. As a teen, I saw her as someone who was being treated unfairly in spite of all the good she does. Like any kid, you feel the urge to want to help her. Why should anyone go through that? As an adult, I now see her as maybe someone I used to be. A kid that needs to find balance while trying to do good in an unfair world. Someone who has to endure in order to grow as a person. Teenage Robot is more than just a sci-fi hero show. It's about living life, being who you are. I think that's something that we can all connect with. I think a lot of the new fans are feeling this now. Jenny's life is still relevant. What's your greatest hope for the future of the community? I hope that every person in the community, past, present, and future, all find their way in their own lives. The Teenage Robot community brings us together for just a moment in the entirety of our lives. It's not a platform to feed your ego or to become complacent. It's where we talk about the show and reflect on where we are heading in life. We never really got to see where Jenny was going, the way the show ended. She was still on her way, and every new fan is going to see that, and see how much like her they are, except they'll be able to see where they are headed, to become more than what they are. Could you explain what you do for a living? Some fans of your work may be surprised to find out what you do outside of art. Eh, for a while I flipped burgers during my late teens. Then I worked as a schlepper for about four years. 
Then I got into construction as a union worker. I had to face reality and accept that I was never going to profit from my art. That's the direction life led me after dropping out of college and leaving home. Survival demands sacrifice. And sometimes you have to just let go. Uh, while it was a very long and stressful journey, I eventually found my way and worked hard to the point where I can live independently, comfortably, and enjoy the fandom in a more balanced and responsible way. I got pretty strong along the way, too. Do you have anything to add? I'm not perfect. I get frustrated by nonsense, and I can't be everyone's friend. I have had fallouts with a few people. There are some that actually do hate me. I honestly hope that they find their way, too. I value every friendship I've made in this community. Carrie J who brought me in, Mimi and Rents of Nora who gave me something to aspire to as an artist, Champ Mars who supported me when I resolved to keep the old community going, Courtney who helped me develop my OC and hers in immense ways. Today I have Traz to thank for bringing me back into this new community. I also thank the Teenage Robot Rebooted crew for making me feel welcome among a new generation of fans. If you want to be a likable person, and make friends, you have to be a genuinely good person. This is not something you can fake. It's not something you can boast and expect everyone to take your word for it. You have to believe and actively practice it yourself. Doing good, being yielding, being a good listener, and putting others ahead of yourself without the expectation of reward. It's the right thing to do. That's how you be a good friend. And that's how you cultivate a good reputation. Jenny is my muse. The community is my audience, and I will always be around to draw freely for them all. Thank you for your time, XJ Zero. Your work in the community is phenomenal. It's been a pleasure to interview you. You can follow XJ Zero using the links in the description below. If you guys would like us to interview anyone else in the community, be sure to leave a comment expressing this below. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a rating. If you want to reach us, leave a comment or check out our other platforms. Links are in the description.